Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video works, we're gonna talk through some different work situations that could arise. And I'm gonna give you my thoughts as far as if you need to address it or if you should just focus on getting your check. And if it is a situation where you need to address it, I'm gonna try to give tips on how to address it, but still get your check, girl, because that's what matters. <laughs> in the first situation, you have a coworker who is always inserting themselves in your business or trying to force friendship on you. In this sort of situation, you better run me my check, okay? I, I don't even bother to address it unless it like is really becoming an issue. And I feel like the best way to kind of handle this is just to have boundaries in place. You don't have to tell all your coworkers every single one of your details. Like I think I've talked about this before in another video, but your coworkers do not have to be your friends. You can have coworkers that are friends and it's great if you have coworkers that are your friends, but your coworkers do not have to be your friends. Don't feel that you have to tell them everything about your life just because they're telling you everything about theirs. If they choose to overshare that, I hate to say it is on them, but you do not have to overshare. You can share what you feel comfortable with sharing and leave it at that. And if it starts to become a problem, I definitely think this is the time to loop in someone that's a little bit more senior, maybe like a supervisor, to either help you navigate or just kind of make it clear to the other person like, hey, we're really just work colleagues. Let's leave it at that. Now in the second situation, you have a manager who isn't very supportive of you or is kind of just there. In this situation, as much as I want to say run me my check, your manager, depending on the sort of organization that you work at, has a lot more impact on your career than is reasonable for me to just kind of sit back and run the check. If your manager is not supportive in the sense that maybe they're very critical of you, I think that's a conversation you should have with the manager to understand if there's something you're actually doing wrong. And then if there's not something you're doing wrong and they're just critical of you, if there's a way to get a different manager or maybe to have someone kind of mediate, I think would be helpful. Now, in a situation where your manager is just not very helpful <laughs> and barely around, I also think this is a time where you want to loop someone in and see if you can switch managers. As I said to me, in some organizations, the role that your manager plays in your career progression is a little too important for you to just ignore and say, run me my check, because eventually, girl, they might cut that check off. Another option in this sort of situation is also to find someone else in the organization whether it's another manager or someone senior who can mentor and coach you in the event that you can't immediately change your manager. That way you're not doing yourself a disservice by not getting guidance. In this third situation, let's say that you're working with a client and you have a client who is not sure what they want and is frequently giving you conflicting guidance. In this sort of a situation, I'm inclined to say run me my check. Now I will say though that I feel that if you're in this sort of situation, the important thing is to make sure that you document, document, document as a whole your organization or your team should already be documenting, but especially when you have a client who is giving you conflicting guidance or tells you one thing one week and changes it the next week, it's important to make sure that you guys have your ducks in a row as far as your contracts, your meeting minutes, things that will indicate what you were initially brought on to do and what they've requested for you to do at any point in time. Um, you don't want to find yourself in a position where you can't back it up or it's essentially their word against yours. Because if it is their word against yours and they are the one pulling the purse strings, they have the option of closing the purse strings. So you just wanna make sure that you have a little bit of documentation in place. Another thing to keep in mind in this sort of a situation is that it is possible that also on your client side, maybe there's just conflicts, right? Maybe there's a client team where people are not seeing eye to eye or maybe your direct client and their supervisor or people who are also stakeholders in the process are disagreeing. This would be a, an opportunity for you to actually show that you are worth the bucks by helping your clients to see the long-term impacts of all the different decisions that they're making. That way it does become clear from the onset, like, hey, this is what happens if we do X, Y, and Z thing. And hopefully it can also improve your relationship with the client or at least instill further confidence from them in you. The fourth situation is you're being asked to pick up extra roles and responsibilities that are outside of your initial duty. In this sort of a situation, I would also say it depends. I think if it is for a limited amount of time or let's say that someone is out on leave or um, maybe it's busy season and this is kind of the norm, maybe that's okay. Maybe just run me my check, right? But if this is something that is a problem that maybe the team isn't staffed appropriately in terms of skill set or in terms of number of people, this is something you probably want to talk to someone about. In the sort of instance also where you're taking on what essentially ends up being like a second role or multiple roles or roles that are really outside of your toolbox and are requiring you to do things that you're actually not really qualified to do, you also want to raise this to someone's attention. As great as it can be to take on extra work, you always have to be careful that you are not doing it at the detriment of the quality of work that you're providing or at the quality of your ability to balance. You do not want to burn yourself out. Now in general, the professional context I will overlook quite a bit, honestly, like 
something as simple as somebody talks to me the wrong way, mm, that's not my business, run me my check, right? But I feel that you also have to know that when something happens that is unethical, that's potentially illegal, that's discriminatory, that is like harassment, you have to speak up. Additionally, if the environment is not conducive to my growth, so this means either I don't feel stimulated or I just don't feel valued, I personally wouldn't plan on staying for long. Now, if you do report anything, you need to make sure that you document to the best of your ability. You should make sure that you take track of who you spoke to, what you told them, and when you told them. The honest truth is that work is literally a huge chunk of all of our lives. And yes, things will happen sometimes that you may not like, but there should be a balance in the things that you don't like but can manage versus the things that are really unbearable. So it's important that as you navigate different situations at work, you just have to have it in mind. Is this something that I can bear or is it something that I, I legitimately cannot bear? As great as it is to get that check, make sure that you always prioritize being in a healthy work environment. That's all I have for today's video. Please make sure to like this video, share with others, and subscribe to my channel.